doing infinite scrolling with Power Automate Desktop is straightforward. Here I have a page where I need to scroll because I need to extract all these reviews here. But if I scroll down, more reviews will appear. So I'll create a solution that first scrolls all the way to the bottom and then extract all these reviews. Let's do this together. First, I'll re refresh the page. So we're back at the start. I put a URL in the course description down below. So you can do this with me. That will be a URL to this page. Let's go to Power Automate Desktop. First of all, I want to create a browser instance. I'll do that with a launch new. I'll pick Edge because I opened the page in Edge. So I'll drag it in, but fine. You can do it in Chrome or Firefox. It will be just as a good solution. I could open up the URL, but since I already have the browser tab open, I'll just click this drop down, attach to running instance. We will choose by title because then I can click this tab title drop down here and the alchemist will appear. This is by the way, a Copenhagen restaurant. We will produce a variable called browser, which we can refer to later in this flow. Whenever we need to automate this tab, which we will, I'll click save. Then the next step, let's just open up the browser. I want to make sure that I'm in this sidebar here and not in the map once the page loads or for example here. How can I do that? I will just like a human do, I will click here because then I can send an name click. And where should I click? I will find an element that's always there and not having a link. So for example, I could not click Peter because Peter could be Anders next time, or I will not click this team or census because that's a link. So the state of the sidebar changes, but this reviews unverified. I might could click this because Google will rarely change this. So it'll be very stable and it will always be there, whether we have the Alchemist, Noma or another Danish restaurant or foreign restaurant. So let's do that click and then we can start the solution. To make a click on any element, I'll find a click link on web page and drag it in. You can see now we work in the browser instance, which is fine. Click this drop down. Now we will create a UI element. Let me drag it over here. This UI element picker opens. Now you can see I can pick all of these different UI elements. We agreed that we wanted to pick the reviews and verified. So here I will press control on my keyboard. Once this is read, click with the mouse. We have created our first UI element. We'll click save. Whenever we create a UI element, we always want to inspect it. So I go up to the right corner here, click it. And here you can see it. First of all, the name diff reviews aren't verified. That's a great name. We will not change that, but let's double click it. Here is the address of this UI element. What we want to look for is that we don't want to, to be it unique. That could be weird looking ideas that will only work with the alchemist and not the next company. So first of all, that is the child element that's called diff with an attribute called text reviews and verified. This will be the same over and over, but the parent here or the great parent that will be diff ID equals this could change this ID and then this select would not work. So let's remove this and see if we can replace it with something else more stable. To find the first element, I go over to this element tree and then I find the first element that is ticked. That will be this five. So if I click that, you can find the ID here. Please do it with me. You will learn so much more. Then I untick it. Now this might not be unique enough. We cannot find something un uh, unique here for this reviews unverified. But if I go one back, for example, to the four, I can see there's an ID equal content container. I believe that this ID will always be there. And again, it's just believe because practice make perfect. I created a lot of these selectors. So if I click this, you can now see that we added a div element with an attribute at a value called ID and content container. Now we clicked, then we can do our infinite scrolling. What will we do? What I want to do here is that before I do anything, I want to count the number of reviews. So that will be one, two, three, probably around eight. 
And once that is counted, so that would be eight, then I will send an end click because an end click will scroll to the bottom and load more. Then I will do another count that could be 18. Then I will say if these two numbers, eight and 18 in this, in this occasion is not the same, then I will do it once more. I will count the number of reviews, send an end click, count the number of reviews again after the end click. Are these two not equal to each other? Uh, no, that will be different again because I scroll down, more appeared. Then I will repeat it. Once I'm at the bottom, these two numbers will be the same because I cannot load more reviews. And then my flow should stop and continue to the next date, which will be web extraction. Let's create that. I'll refresh the page up here. So now we have it at start again. It will make our lives a little bit easier. That's always also how the page looks once we load our flow. So first of all, if we want to do something over and over as long as a certain condition is met, we can find a loop condition and drag it in. A loop condition just it does exactly that. It runs over and over as long as a certain condition is met. Here it will be the count of reviews before the end click. If that is not equal to the count of reviews after the end click, then it will run over and over. We don't have the variables here, so we'll wait a bit, filling it in. I'll click Save. It's fine. It will produce an error. We will fill it in in a little while. First, let's go up to Actions here then find an Extract Data from Web Page here. So now we're going to extract this, these names. That could be eight. To activate our page, I go to a browser. This live web helper will open. I'll move it over here. Now we want to find the first one. So I'll just extract a name because there's always a name to these reviews. So find something unique. I will right click on this Peter Picatagio. Diff, extract element value, take the Peter. You can see it over here in the extraction preview. Then I will go to the next one. In my case, it's Thomas. I will right click, extract element value, pick that. Now you can see it in the preview, it extracts eight names. That will be the first eight reviews. And if I, let me just make sure I click over here. I send an end click. Now you can see more loads. If I click refresh here, you can see our web scraping works because now we have 18 and I can do it. Click over here, say end more, I can do another refresh. Now we have 28. So we can do the scrolling, this works. But to make sure, let's just refresh it again. Now we're at the beginning, but we saw this works. I can click finish. I also want to give it a better name than data from web page. So here I can say amount of reviews before end click. Always name your variables by the values they represent. Then it will be much more easy for you to uh, find. What I want to do here is to click save. Now we want to send the end click. To do so, I simply just find a send keys and drag it in after the extract data from web page. We will click the insert special keys and in MISC here, you will find the end click. Click it here. You can see you could also have written curly brackets end, but it's easier to find in these drop downs, I believe. I'll click save. Then we will repeat this. And since it's the same elements in the structured data, I could just click this, control C to copy it, click the end. That's because I need to click the action where I want my new action to be pasted in. So I'll say control V. Now we have a copy of this. It will be the same extraction, but I just need to change before to after. I'll double click to open it. Go down here in the variables produced and find an after. So now I do these two things. Then I just need to fix my loop condition. Double click to open it. So here I will say as long as these two aren't equal to each other, then I'll try once more. I will have the amount of reviews before end click not equal to click down here, click the X, say after end click, I'll click save. Two things that we can fix that will be the run delay because we're doing 
some end clicks. So I can change this run delay to one. This is just whenever we are here in the editor, there will be a little delay between these actions. That is nice because then when we develop, there will be a much longer delay of 0 0.1 second. Um, it will not happen in production. So we will just fix it here. One other thing is that when we start this, these two variables, amount of reviews before end click and amount of reviews after end click, they'll be equal to each other because they will have no value. And then we reach this loop condition. Then this condition, is this true? Well, no, they're not different from each other. Then it will just go down here to the end and end it. So let's give, for example, this before end click a value. So we know that it will at least uh, loop once. So here I will have a set variable and let us click it, click the X amount of reviews before and click and let's give it just the value zero and click save. It will get overridden as soon as we get here because now we will run it. They are different from each other. So once this is done, we know that we are at the button. Let's just create the last part. So here I'll find an extract data from web page and that will be after the loop condition. That is very important. Now I can take my reviews out. So here I will activate this again. Then I just need to pick what data do I want? Well, I could use the PETA. So again, I will right click, extract element value and take the PETA. I'll also have this one name here. So I'll have the Thomas extract, boom, Power Automate Desktop takes these names. I also wanted the reviews. I know I could click more here. That will be the next part of the exercise. So for now, I could either click, click span or div. Just take the inner one. I'll take span, right click, extract element value. And we have the first part of these reviews from all of them. This will, of course, works because even um, if we have uh, 470 reviews, which we have today, then I click finish. And let's just, instead of a variable, let's open up an Excel spreadsheet, click save. Now let's go back to the page, put it in the initial condition. We can start this and please, I can click run here. If you like these kind of videos, please give it a thumbs up because that will help me and my channel so much. I can make many more videos for you. Of course, only do it if you like it. Now you can see that we are scrolling down. We are scrolling down all the way to the button. We are, we will have 470 rows in our Excel book in a little while. So I think I will go up, pick some coffee. I'll come back, fast forward the video. A few moments later. That's it. Automation completed. First of all, it opened up this Excel. And by the way, no more coffee. So I had to grab a glass of water. First of all, we can see our extractions here. We have a lot of extractions. We have 465 uh, written reviews. Some of them were not uh, reviews. That's because the old ones didn't carry any reviews. So that looks fine. I can close my Excel or choose to save it. Then I can also go here and can see that I scrolled all the way to the button. That's how you do infinite scrolling in Power Automate Desktop. Your next video is right here. Go click it. You will learn so much more Power Automate Desktop. See you.